we're back together with uh, you through the live streaming and ministries of Orchard Avenue Baptist Church. And we are looking forward to Sunday, uh, the great time of fellowship, study, worship, uh, being together in God's house. And let me encourage you, uh, if you do not attend a local church somewhere, find one, be a part of a church. Uh, get involved. This is God's will for us that you and I connect together with the body of Christ, the family of God, and we serve the Lord through the church. Uh, God has gifted each and every Christian follower of Jesus. If you've accepted him as personal savior, uh, Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 teach that you have a God-given spiritual gift to be used through the church so that the church can go into the world and reach lost people. And uh, Monday of this week, we began 1 Timothy chapter 1, and we talked about the significance of sound doctrine. And then on Wednesday, we picked up in verse 12, and we looked at the topic of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which saves sinners. And Paul said, I'm the chiefest of all. I've done the worst of all things and he said, God saved me so that I could be a witness to the rest of the world that if God could save me, Paul, then he can save you too also. Well, today we're going to look at the last few verses of 1 Timothy chapter 1 and pick it up in verse number 18. And Paul uses some wording here in this short passage, 18, 19, 20, that he repeatedly uses over and over again throughout his epistles. Uh, these are the letters that Paul wrote to local churches. And in those, he uses two very prominent uh, illustrations. One is athletics. Uh, he talks about winning the prize and running the race and so forth. But the other one is the idea of warfare, military attack. It's the understanding that you and I are in a battle against the world, and uh, as, as 1 John talks about, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life. But this warfare that we are waging against the world and Satan is something that you and I need to do for the sake of the gospel and good, sound doctrine. And so let me read to you verse 18 and following. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you wage the good fight, wage the good warfare, having faith in a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have, sh have suffered shipwreck, of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. This sounds like a very strong statement, which if you read the Apostle Paul, uh, you will always know that he speaks the truth boldly. And so what does he say? He says, Timothy, I'm charging you. This is a commandment. This is a, something that I want you to take on. According to the uh, prophecies previously made that you wage the good warfare. Well, let's put this in context. He starts the chapter with sound doctrine, the, the teaching of the word of God. And then he goes into verse 12 and he talks about the understanding of uh, the gospel and how it saves people. Well, uh, apart from the Holy Spirit doing a work in someone's life and the truth of the gospel, uh, a person cannot become a follower of Christ. It's that combination of God drawing people to salvation. Well, the understanding then is that you and I have a responsibility as followers of Christ to wage a good warfare, to defend the faith, to stand for the truth of the doctrine and the truth of the gospel, uh, it is our task and responsibility. And how we go about that differs from person to person based on your personality and your spiritual gifting. But understand, this is our responsibility is to stand for truth. But notice what he says, wage a good warfare, having faith and a good conscience. The foundation for our warfare is faith faith in Christ, and faith that God will give me the enabling or abilities, as Paul said earlier in this chapter, and it's a good conscience. Why am I doing this? Do you remember 
when Paul said uh, that the reason, the motive for sound doctrine is love, faith, and a good conscience. You know, this is not notches in our belt. This is not about numbers. This is not about us and getting glory for ourselves. This is a faith issue in good conscience that I am doing this, as Paul said, uh, I am the chiefest of sinners and God saved me so that others could be saved, verses 12 through 17. This is a good conscience. You and I are doing this for the glory of God. Remember verse 17, now king eternal, immortal, invisible to God alone, who is wise, honor, glory forever. That's why we do this. And so let me encourage you. You may not see yourself uh, as a warrior. You may not see yourself as in a battle. But let me tell you, uh, anytime anyone goes away from the truth, they err in their way, you and I have an opportunity through love and speaking the truth in love. We can share our faith. We can encourage them back. Uh, Paul even illustrates this with two people, Hymenius and Alexander. He said, I delivered them over to Satan so that they would learn not to blaspheme. You know, the uh, error of the way, anytime there is, <clears throat> excuse me, not sound doctrine, what are people doing? Anything they do contrary to God is blaspheming the word of God and the truth of God. And so it's, it's a heavy doctrine. It's a heavy responsibility, but through love and grace. You know, uh, Pastor Mark and I are working on a sermon series of truth and grace. You know, the Bible says in John chapter one, Jesus was full of grace and truth. And you can't separate those. Uh, and unfortunately we do. Uh, we are gracious or we're truthful, but so often we're not both. And the understanding of what Paul is teaching here in Timothy, uh, fight a good fight. Use the balance of grace and truth that comes from Christ and enables us to lovingly share our faith and correct people from the error of their way. Because ultimately, when they err against God, they blaspheme against God, it will be for their destruction and judgment before the Lord. And so you and I uh, lovingly and graciously are helping these people. So take that thought into the weekend. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning this coming week, and uh, we will be preaching God's word uh, with the understanding that God has made us all equal and we have similar needs in our life. And the ironic, unique thing about that that the world is missing is the needs we were created with are met through Jesus Christ and his church. See you Sunday morning.